Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture, all the stuff that you love. And uh, as always, I'm your host, Michael Dolce, and I am joined, as always, by the Lord of the Radio, uh, Hassan Godwin. There's a lot of people in this room. There are like three blondes in the room. Yes, like, yes. Is it like one more and we could have like a band? Like, yeah. You can have a band with three. Like, a, okay, I it's guess like you a, could. Yeah, power trio. Like gem? Trifecta. Yeah. Trifecta. Like a trifecta? Good things come in threes. Good thing. That's true. <laughs> Bad things also come in threes, though. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> no talking, in turn. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they're talking back. <laughs> you got to be sharper than that. That's I know. I'm not sharp. I'm not on at all. So we we promised new camera angles tonight. Yeah, um, you did. But, but but then I went on vacation and I came back and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm good. We could have worked it out in the last hour. We were sitting around. Oh, no, we totally could have. We could have. We totally. Could've. We, could've. We, we were didn't. having a good time though. We were talking about. I somebody. wasn't. I wasn't. Really you were talking a good about time. the what was it? The woman that shot her boyfriend. Yeah, this woman shot her boyfriend in the head because he asked her to shoot her in the head because they thought that the cult leader uh, was a lizard. Yeah. Uh, was a reptilian. reptilian. Well, he's, he's a, he said lizard. No, but that's like an alien, like the shirt I have on, which actually works out pretty good. See, George Sukulis would be very I didn't proud. say he was an alien. He could have been an Earth reptilian guy. Oh, I mean, well, he could have, but... They could have evolved, and they, you know, you now they're posing so? as humans now. I don't now. think they could really evolve. Why though. not? I feel like, I feel like, 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 think about it, though. We're supposed to be, like, derivative of, like, monkeys and apes, right? But there are monkeys and apes still on the Earth. Right. So we clearly did not evolve from them. We might have been tampered with and created no, from them. No, some of them just went back. So some were, of them were just saw, very lazy. Like, this human stuff is crap. <laughs> it's going right back. I would rather fling my poop is yes. it, and eat some bananas, is, yes. it, is what you're saying. I mean, and I feel like the reptiles, that's same an thing, easy right? way to solve a problem, though. Right? Like, I feel like reptiles, same thing. Like, there's tons of them. There were dinosaurs at one point. Right. They think dinosaurs were birds now. Yes. This kind of engaging talk you can get behind the scenes if you go to patreon.com slash secrets of the sire. Or not. Uh, become an executive <laughs> producer. You get on the inside. There's no more monkey talk. <laughs> that's, our, that's our entire show, actually. No more monkey talk? Coming up, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, uh, War of the oh, Planet of the see? Apes. No, we're not actually going <laughs> to talk about that. We are going to talk. That would have been a perfect segue. That really, it actually, would have been a perfect segue. We will, we will talk about War of the Planet of the Apes because it kind of influenced a little bit of another Marvel movie that we were talking about the last two yes, weeks. Yes, yes uh, But we also are excited to have uh, House of Cards actor... And, what was it, a Cinderella story? Yes. Yes. And a Cinderella story actor, Quiet Kevin interns. Kilner. <laughs> no talking. And we're going to preview San Diego Comic-Con. Eat your porridge. We're going to preview San Diego Comic-Con. Because we're going to preview it, right. Comic-Con's going on literally. So this time last year, you were not on the show. No. And I was in San Diego broadcasting live from the Zenoscope. Are you booth. trying to say that you are not in San Diego now because I am on the show? No, but I'm, I'm now, that, now that you mentioned it. you to San Diego? It, maybe, actually, I guess you... How come yeah. I'm not allowed to go to San Diego? How come on the show and now all of a sudden we get cheap and we don't go to we, we don't go on trips? You never take me we anywhere should, anymore. We should go on trips. You're actually, you're bringing... I, I have no argument against this. I, I, I think I, we should go on trips. I, I think I, Talking Alternative Broadcasting should sponsor our trips <laughs> on location. <laughs> That's a good segment. <laughs> ah, there we go. We'll ah. have that conversation after the show. Uh, we are live streaming. want to thank everyone who's joined. Uh, we have Dar Cruz. We have Hassan. You joined. Yeah, okay. hey, you joined, you joined your own out. show. That's, ah, really that's what I do. Yeah, that's um, very good. Very, very egotistical. Nice. Very nice. Uh, but as always, we do this every week. Again, and if you do happen to miss the live show, which sucks if you do miss it because we usually call you out. We usually talk about what you say. Yeah, I will. Um, say something, maybe. We will be on iHeartRadio. Nice we'll be on it. iTunes. We're on SoundCloud. We're on... Yeah, we're everywhere after. I mean, we're that's very like, much... That's not as special. YouTube. Like, we're everywhere. Because we're so not live at that point. We're dead, you know? Right. So, we've been talking the past few weeks about... Someone laughed. I got to laugh. <laughs> That's all I care about. It's Kennedy's first You night may here. have an extra she's spoonful just, of porridge. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, flattery will get you everywhere? Yes, exactly. She's like, I'm moving up in my two-week yeah. internship. I'm, I'm like, so easily. Yeah, I'm, I'm just completely gullible. Trista's like, I have been here all summer long. This place is a heat magnet. Yeah, and she never got any porridge. No, yeah. no. She definitely <laughs> so did not. So where the hell's my porridge? So we've been talking Spider-Man Homecoming the last couple weeks. And we've been talking about... Now, my point of view is it's not an event... Wonder Woman was an event. It was a cultural event. It was something that had deep impact on everything that's going on. Spider-Man, opening weekend, you came on. You said, opening weekend, look at that. It was an event. And it did. It, did. it felt like an event. It felt like something big. It felt like something that people were actually into. Indeed. It felt like Spider-Man was kind of back. Um, okay. We gave our review, and, yes, and it was a did. good review, although we both walked away from our review being like, boy, I guess we liked it less than we thought we did. Yeah, which, um, is, which is a little disturbing. And then... Uh, 
you aptly post an article on our Secrets yes. of the Sire page, okay. facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Pay the bills. Pay, the bills. Pay those bills. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man's awful 73% Friday to Friday plummet. What it means for Sony, Marvel, and superhero films. Uh, Spider- Ho- Spider-Man Homecoming's debut weekend last week seemed to be a cause for celebration for both Sony and Marvel, which owns the rights to the Spider-Man franchise, um, which got to welcome its long-lost brother back into the universe. The film was extremely well-reviewed, uh, 93% score on Rotten Tomatoes, well-attended, $117 million uh, opening weekend, the best three-day opening for a Spidey flick. But then things turned sour as uh, grosses fell off the cliff, tumbling 73% from Friday to Friday. $50 million tally to an estimated $13.6 million on the second. Uh, it's one of the worst Friday to Friday drops the 16-movie Marvel Cinematic Universe has ever seen. Only Avengers Age of Ultron, which really wasn't very good, which we kind of all kind of talked about and said maybe that's the weakest of, the, of, the, of all the Marvel films, right? Would we say Avengers Ultron is the worst of all the, of all the Marvel films? I don't know. The first Thor was pretty bad, in my opinion. Actually, really? the second Thor was actually no. The second bad. Thor, the second Thor, I think was yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, was pretty bad. I think the second Thor. I think Iron Man three, much to the birthday. chagrin of our comics noobs guest who was on a few weeks ago, was was not very good. And Iron Man two is. I think Iron Man two is the worst. If I have to, if nah. I have to go with the one that's the worst, I think Iron Man two. Not um, worse than Age of Ultron though. Not worse than Age. No. Uh, Com- considering what that movie had to follow, because <sighs> they had to follow the first Avengers movie and. All right. It was all a right, bad follow-up. Right. You, know, you know, it's funny. We, we come in with an outline, and then we compl- completely diverge. That's why I don't read the outline. This is why you don't prepare. This is why I do not prepare. Um, Captain America's Civil War coffee. actually fared worse, they said, from week to week. That's what I'm saying. That it, I mean, how many of those Marvel movies had to go up against another franchise, another sure. another huge franchise? Sure. And Wonder Woman dropped about uh, almost 60%, mm-hmm. and that was to The Mummy, which was a flop. But it beat, no, no, it beat The Mummy, though. It beat the mummy, but it it dropped. It went up against the mummy, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, but and it, it, it dropped about 60%, and the mummy was actually a flop. But we so. talked about this, too, though. Wonder Woman was coming on the heels of the DC franchises that were all critically reviewed poorly, right? Like Everything that people talked about, the Batman v. Superman, right. was awful, and it really was. Like, there's not a single... You know, I, I'll tell you what. Our prequel debate that we have with, uh, with Brian Everham uh, is, is hilarious and awesome, but... Um, it's not really. No, it is. It's, it's actually really well, it's hilarious great. for me anyway, and it's it, right. it, it's exciting to watch. Right. That's what um, I keep bringing up. There's not a single person I know, with the exception of I guess Nevin Frederick, who who's one of our, our our listeners and viewers who loved Batman v Superman. There's nobody that thinks that Batman v Superman. Is a I good actually movie. didn't think it was that bad. You did. You didn't think it was. good. I don't think it's a good movie, but I think it, I didn't think it was that bad. Right. I did, it, with the experience of uh, watching it, wasn't that bad. Brian Everham just joined our uh, our feed as well too. Oh yeah. Uh, welcome, Christina Dolce, Stephanie Dolce, people I have no relation to. Nor am I married to, mm-hmm. or related not at all. to as a sibling. Not a fix at all. And uh, David Leibowitz joined us as well too. We'd like to welcome all of our people again. You can be part of this. You can be part of our backstage. You can be part of you know all this stuff. You could see all Unless three. You're listening you could to this on the podcast, see all in which three case it's too late for you to be part of it. Anyway. Up until now, no, no, um, don't try to be part of it if you're listening to it later. So I guess you just hurt yourself. You know, here's the funny thing though. Somebody did comment on this though, and they said that the Batman v Superman drop off, you know, happened also, but the you know. The critical news around it was like, oh, my God, it was crazy. You know, and the Spider-Man drop-off now, again, same thing. But you said the Wonder Woman drop-off. And off, Spider-Man is, not, is, is in no danger of being a flop. No. So then what are, we, why, what are they talking about? It, it, it's, it's complete lack of anything else to, to report. I don't think it's I, much okay, do about absolutely I think absolutely there's nothing. always going to be that problem. I think there's always going to be like we're in a twenty. We're not even in a twenty four hour news cycle now. We are in just mm-hmm. like yeah, it's, it's random. Like, like absolutely, well, it has to be twenty four hours because we don't have any. Other I know, but it's even more than like twenty four hours because usually like the twenty four hours. How can it be more than? Uh, no, hours? I, but that's my point I, exactly. It's like thirty six hours. Making, yeah, I'm actually making a point that I feel like we're beyond. Like a twenty four hour news cycle used to be like one story for twenty four hours. Now it's like there's. ADD 24-hour news cycle now. There has to be, like, multiple stories. You have to be consistently writing. Like, I know, and I used to work for one of these news websites. I mean, you would basically scour news, find what was trending, and write just, news about that news. So most of them just steal news from other sites? Oh, well, you're not stealing. You're quoting. It's much different. Oh, okay. It's much different. All right. No, I'm going to quote your car after we, we leave <laughs> this evening. I'm going to lock my keys in it. You can't get to it. <laughs> That's uh, a good idea. You know... 
<laughs> no, but that's the thing. Like, that's what these news sites do, right? They write about other news. So, mm-hmm. you know, they find something. So, Spider Man Homecoming, big trending topic. Yes. Find something to write about. Yes. That being said, make numbers, something up. Numbers, make something sound dire. No, but numbers don't lie, though, right? 117 million, and then they got beat by uh, War of the Planet of the Apes. But they War of the Planet of the Apes, which was a, you know, which is the third installment of another major franchise. Sure. But they expected, well that to be closer, well, they expected that to be closer, though. They expected that to be closer. They expected it, instead of it being, it was, I think it was 53 well, their to 40 expectations, million. So who, who, but why do they have speculation expectations and stuff like that? Why? That's what Hollywood's always been. Though. Yeah, and it's stupid. Because when you've, you've seen that when um, The Amazing Spider-Man came out, um, sure. and it, it was a follow-up to Spider-Man 3. Okay. Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man never made any more, any, any serious numbers like uh, okay. the first three Spider-Man movies, right? Right. Their their take on it, Sony's take on it was, well, we just lowered our expectations and it exceeded our lowered <laughs> expectations. I'm not kidding. That was right. the, That's what they said. Right. And in which case, uh, now it's a hit. We've decided it was a hit. So it's just, they just move the goalposts when they want to and they, they can declare something a hit or not. That's why you can have a, a movie like, um, oh man, you can have a movie that's a flop like, like John Carter. And it doesn't tank the studio. It doesn't tank uh, Disney because they they are insulated. So we so past guest Fabian Nicieza just just chimed in, plummeting. It had a seventy three percent drop from Friday to Friday, which is steep and more than they would like. But Saturday and Sunday were only fifty three to fifty five percent, which is standard. It made more yesterday than it did on Monday. It made more yesterday than Apes did. It is over two hundred and twenty million domestic, which is already more than Amazing Spider Man two total in just. Less than two weeks, and it hasn't even opened in China yet. Thank you, the Fabian. Overseas <laughs> box office. We're not even going to talk about just yet because that's that's like in and of itself. I feel like you just release a movie there, and people just go nuts because they don't have movies. Like period, they, they don't have TVs or something. What? It's China's like a very poor country. It's not that bad. It's not good. It's not. That, what are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on. Hey. <laughs> Eat your porridge quietly. <laughs> we have three blonde interns. Holy you know, crap! I have to point out that they're blonde because it's just it, I, I because they were having eye, a, it, like a full fledged conversation like right a next to me. Striking visual, like in the background here, oh, and yeah. just as like tanner than all of them. Yeah, <laughs> three angels. Well, Wait. let's not go that what are we far doing? there. Right? What's been, that is, there is a lot. What's of, going on here that we have to pay? To, is something recording? I don't know. Let's just recording? talk. Let's just have a conversation. I don't know what you're ourselves. talking about. We got no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I I do agree. Yes, I do agree. It's not. It's not as dire, but it was dire on Friday when they wrote the article. And I think it also speaks to something else, though, right? <laughs> what? Nothing. Well, <laughs> I made a face, and Sam Sam just kind of looked away. <laughs> to did he not want to laugh? I actually was he broke the fourth wall. There is no fourth wall because we're on the radio, but yeah. I broke the fourth wall looking at our engineer, and he, I promised new and camera he denied angles. me. New camera angle. There you go. Yeah, like there we go. I n- promise new camera angles tonight. Yeah, that's a lasting. There's our wall of interns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're very chatty interns. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. Hey, I just showed the interns when our Facebook Live feed went up. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, but anyway, you were saying you, you broke the fourth wall. I already said it. Oh, that's it? That was the end no, of the No, you story? weren't listening. That's all. Oh, I was. That's, that's I the was. problem. But then I wanted to show No, I don't want to even talk about it anymore. No? Get back to the story. So, Fabian, we do appreciate you chiming in. Thank you, Fabian, because Fabian proved me right. Thank you. No Which big deal. I no will big come, deal. When I come back. <laughs> when, when we come back. Yeah, I'm not coming back when you come back. I will tell you why you are wrong. <laughs> and we're going to start previewing San Diego Comic-Con, which is going on like right now when we come back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. want to connect with are you an entrepreneur or entrepreneur looking to build your following welcome to our show follow, follow me friday, friday with joan and priya tune in every friday at noon eastern on talkradio.nyc we're, we're your digital, digital connectors, connectors. Woo woo! What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. (laughs) 
the superpower you wish you had? Um, teleportation. Ooh. There you go. I always go flight. I'm always like, I want to fly. You teleport. You don't need to fly. Right. You never be late for work. <laughs> That's what you would do. This is why you're the co-host of a, of a, of a middling podcast, because yeah. you don't dream big enough. It'd because I can't teleport. If I could teleport, you think I would be sitting here right now? You'd be on time. Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. Secrets of the Sire is brought to you by all of our beloved patrons. We have dedicated <laughs> fans, Einar Peterson, Matt Beyer, Ashley, hi, hi. Our program director, <laughs> Stephanie Dolce, our executive producer, Steve Ovecki, Brian Phillips, Christina Gillen, and as always, our Uber fan, Christina Dolce. I will be excited about our patrons, it's kind damn of a it. fix, though. They are paying our bills poorly, very yeah, poorly. Not I, enough. I need, we need more Patreons for my own that's, life, that's basically. That's right. <laughs> I need what to would you that. give if you could do a Patreon page for your life? Like, not an actual skill, because you're an, you're actually an extremely talented artist. You're an extremely talented bass player, but you can't use any of that. What would you actually offer patrons for your life if you could? Like, just do laundry. Like, would you do laundry for patrons? Like, no. give me your laundry. Heck I'll do no. your laundry. No, I wouldn't do. I would do dishes. That's that's you would, the, you yeah. Would, you know what I would offer? I would offer witty like, commentary to, to to television shows. Like, there you go. Done. Okay, but niche, would it be like after niche. the fact, or would you have to like literally? No, I'd be. And it watch would be live. TV? There would be. It would be during. But okay. I would be doing it in my living room, and oh, that, so you, there would be oh. like a feed. See, I would think that I would thing. see. I would pay a dollar a month if you came to my living room and watched TV with me. That's that's for a dollar. Yeah. No. That's yeah, a but if creepy. you get like a bunch of the people, then eventually you'll hit all of them, and you'll eventually watch TV in all their houses. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of work. Well, it's true, but it'll, get you, out, it'll get you out of the house. I don't want to leave my house. The whole reason I wanted Patreon. <laughs> so you don't leave your house? Yes. That's not the purpose of Patreon. All right, we digress. I've repurposed Patreon. <laughs> we digress. Uh, we were talking You're about Spider-Man Homecoming. We were talking about the... Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> we were talking about the dip in uh, Which is not really a dip. Which we established was not really a dip. And what I we were was, talking about before that... Fabian Eziaza chimed in and he, he exonerated yes, me. Yes, the you co-creator know. of Deadpool. Yes, he did. Yes. And if yes, you want to listen to our interview with him... He did co-create... Deadpool, and we did a show with him. Yeah, go check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Secrets of the Sire. He will tell you why Deadpool was not a knockoff on Deathstroke. Yes, he will go in-depth about in that. In-depth. Yes, and, and his reasoning him. is perfect. His yeah, reasoning is perfect. It was the easiest interview we had to do, Yes, because we asked him one question. Yes, and he went, um, it was fantastic. For like 20 minutes, it was great. Um, so no, here's the thing um, that I think in general um, we were talking about before this, and I think what's going to prove our point is actually not even this week, right? I think mm-hmm. next week is going to be a big indicator, right? Wonder Woman, yes, didn't even make as much money right now as Spider-Man has made. Nope. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. However, it won the number one box office week after week after week for a good three to four weeks. Yep, Agreed, so. it didn't have to go up against a different competition. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, you got that. But B, it also it had it had a lot more pressure on it. I think than well, actually, right now I'm going to say I'm going to step back from that. I'm going to step back from that. Good thing. I don't think it has as much pressure. Spider Man a reboot of a sixth, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. sixth movie. But it it had the baggage of the previous DC films behind it. Arguable that Spider Man had the baggage of the previous five films behind it, or at least the previous three. But we talked about it last week. Going in, if you're watching the Spider Man movie, like you are actually. Like you, you're bolstered by the fact that you know, and in fact, you you know, it might have been Marvel's insecurity to have Iron Man in it as much as they did because they're like, we need to show this as part of the Marvel universe, so we're going to have Iron Man in yeah, it. Yeah, we much litigated as that so, but so, so why is this not as bad, or why is why is this worse than the Wonder Woman drop off? Uh, I think that the Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman still won the box office. I think that's what it comes down to, and they and Wonder Woman wasn't up against. The Planet of the Apes wasn't wasn't up against another major franchise. I agree. I agree. I, I think the long um, the long and short of it, though, it's actually it was actually up against the Tom Cruise movie, which is now kind of a legend for how bad it was. Yeah, it's, it, it was Van Helsing proportion. <laughs> yes, which is pretty yes. impressive. Yes, pretty impressive so and now, impressive. Yeah. So now we can actually say instead of a Van Helsing effect, we can actually a, a mummy effect. Yeah, a mummy effect. Yeah. Um, all right. It well, actually did worse than the Brandon Fraser mummy. Can you imagine that? Well, no, but I think those a lot were of hits. Li- no, but they like those movies. Yes, people like those, those were movies. hits. Right. But you're you're you know, and someone comes along and says we're going to remake this a major Hollywood. You know, a, a major Hollywood production is going to be part of a shared universe, and Tom Cruise is going to star in it. That that all spells box. You know, box office bonanza. Uh huh. 
right? Yeah. And it's and it's actually fared worse than the Brandon Fraser movie that came out like twenty years ago. Did you say Brandon Fraser? Yeah. Brandon. Don't Whatever. Mess with, don't mess with Brendan Fraser. He'll get you. He'll you going to kill time on that? No, you know, you, you <laughs> got to do what you got to do. All right. We're, we're going to see what happens next week. We're going to monitor this story. You're going to monitor. I'm not going to really Well, because you don't prepare for this show at all. We well, I'm going to I'm gonna have moved on. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm just, No, I know. I'm not you're, at all. Yeah, what are you talking about? All right. No. We have Comic-Con 2017 going on Never been. right now. You've never, never been, to, been, San, to, San, you've never been to San Diego ever. No. I was there last year. It was broadcasting. It's very exciting. Yeah, we established that too. Yeah, we talked about that. Exciting. And I didn't. I don't get to go on trips. Uh, you know, here's the thing about Comic Con, though, right? Yeah. Um, and, and this kind of is a very good juxtaposition against uh, the Spider Man talk, the Marvel talk that we've mm-hmm. been having. You know, as Marvel, nice big is word Mar- too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. I didn't have a couple beers before we got here. No, no. Um, I, what is, you know, is the is the shine off? You know, this kind of phenomenon, right? I mean, Comic-Con a couple well, years ago. Fi- let's go five years ago. You're talking about the Marvel phenomenon or comic books I'm, in I'm saying in general. I'm saying in general the comic book movie phenomenon, which, which fed into Comic-Con, which is why New York Comic-Con is such a big hit, mm. which is why you know, San Diego is such a big hit. Like, you know, are we basically, are we seeing the end? Uh, and we've talked about it. We, look, we talked about it a lot last year because this is something that well, within I the industry. I wasn't here. No, I know. But within, and you didn't listen to the show. Within the industry. <laughs> I did, though. We would t- I know. <laughs> And that's why you're here. Now, uh, <laughs> see, you could be the ultimate Patreon. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, basically, it, it, it had a different feel last year. Mm. And, and a lot of these shows now, I mean, I, I remember a few years ago, I mean, San Diego Comic-Con was like, holy cow, I'm walking around this, like, mecca. This, I mean, it was just like everything around me was was something huge. But, again, we've, we've talked about this. Now, the marketplace itself has gotten so congested with these movies now. And people, I mean, it's mainstream. Like, you, uh, we were even talking at the bar when, when I was not having those three beers mm-hmm. that, um, you know, the idea of this stuff is not, you know, it's mainstream now, right? right. I mean, what, what, right. Was the, what, were the, what was the conversation we were having? It was something about, uh, you know, if you, were, if you were a closet Batman fan, there's no such thing now. Yes, yeah, right? there's no sense. Uh, you were saying it's a geek. The closet geek would be a big Batman fan, mm-hmm. and it's actually not. He no. he'd be he's a mainstream uh, like uh, poser. Yeah, you know? and you are you are like legitimately, um, you know, praised. you're mainstream. If you're if you're into uh, Batman, you're into comic book movies. Now you're a mainstream. You're I, not you're not a niche audience anymore. Right, and I I have a Batman shirt that I will sometimes wear on this show, and I've walked around and gotten people being like, "Oh, that's an awesome shirt." Like the guy at Starbucks is like, "Oh my god, what a great shirt! That's Jim Lee." And I'm like, I'm like, you are not a typical comic book fan, but they're out there. Like it's 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 out there. So it's I feel like the same kind of thing has happened at San Diego, and I think. The panels have kind of reflected that a little bit. I don't. I think the. I think the shine is off a little bit. What um, do you think that means? I, you know, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But I do know this: that Saturday. Uh, segue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah subject yeah, change. That, that actually was pretty good, though. No, it was better so than last it was week, right. right? It's it's more of a. I will drink more before the show. It's more of an Every. RSC than it is a segue. But. Um, <laughs> Saturday, eleven thirty a.m. Warner Brothers Pictures panel. You ready for this lineup? This is this has to be the must see panel of the weekend though. You're getting Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One with stars T- uh, Ty Sheridan, Olivia Cook, and T.J. Miller. Oh, and by the way, the screenwriters uh, you know Klein and Zach Penn. Oh, and, and Steven Spielberg. He's going to be on that panel. Like what a kick ass panel, right? Like I have to see this panel. It's amazing. They are, Steven Spielberg is actually going to be on the panel. And He's Spielberg be there. on the panel. Physically. It's Spielberg, not going to be like a hologram Sp- Spielberg. And, that I can't tell you. Okay. It's probably going to be a hologram. Spielberg on the panel is what the write-up said. Wow. At the same panel, the long-awaited Blade Runner 2049 with Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford, uh, and what? a number of Ro- Robin Wright, James McKenzie Davis, the writers, and the director will be on this exact on this same, same panel. panel. Warner Brothers How Pictures big is that table? Panel. <laughs> That's a big table. And Come on. joined by Ben Affleck, Gail Gadot, what? Jason How? Moma, Ezra Miller, well, those are the losers. Ray Fisher, those are talking the... all things Justice League and a sneak preview those are the little people. <laughs> at James Wan's Aquaman on the same no. panel. No. Because of because of Warner Brothers because it's of a uh, Warner uh, wow. Brothers picture. No, panel. that's good. That's all going to be. They're all going to be in, in the same hour place. and a half. That's, they're not going to. Hall H. I bet you they're going to do that incrementally. Like they're going to do it. In well, they segments. will do it incrementally. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be all sitting will, yes. there at the same. Time. See, all right. So that's not so bad. That's a half an hour per person. 
And that's all you That's get. not going to work, too. It's going to go way over. Oh, it's absolutely. It's going to go way over. Absolutely. I, I think if we had to pick the must-see panel. Spielberg. I think that's pretty much it. Ready Player One. But now, Mar- one. Marvel's 530 panel. Now, this is Polygon.com guesstimating because they don't actually announce what they're going to do. Oh, um, you just line up and hope it's good. But here's another thing, though, right? Like, th- There's not only a glut of superhero movies. There's not even a, not only a glut of like competition in general. There's a glut of conventions. Uh, the question is what Marvel Studios plans to bring to SDCC. Unlike last year, Marvel also made an appearance at the D23 convention, which is a biennial fan con- What does biennial mean? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's biannual. No, no, no. this is biannual. And I copied and pasted the words. Biennial? So. It's two years, every two years. Every two years, is that what it is? All right. Yeah. Fan convention last weekend. Uh, yeah, What's interns. interns. There's interns. three people Come on, here. Interns. Put the Porsche first, down and first use the computer. to get it. <laughs> gets to not be gets on it, camera? Gets an extra. Gets to be on camera? Biannual. Biennial. 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 Taking place every other year. Taking place ah, every other year. Every two years. They couldn't say biannual, though? This is some poor writing by Polygon. I think it is biannual. I think you read it wrong. No, 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 no. I literally copied and pasted. It's so. biannual. Biannual. That's an actual word. Maybe they're smarter than we are. <laughs> that's not possible. Uh, D23's fan festival. No comment. Where they had Avengers <laughs> Infinity War. So they already dropped Avengers Infinity War stuff, which is where we got that cool Thanos shot that we posted on our Facebook feed and, and our Instagram, mdolce64, like, you know, and the Twitter account. You know, which is also Michael underscore Dolce. Go check mm. that out. Secret okay. Sire. Um, you know, so be. the question is, what that. are they going to be releasing at their fan panel here? Um, the big the, last year they did a lot of Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Um, it's this be their year, big thing. Thor Ragnarok is coming out in November, so they don't really need to hype it up as much. They, mm-hmm. This is according mm-hmm. to this, although I would think that they would want to. Um, yeah, they should hype they everything. They think Captain Marvel is going to be the big. You know, reveal. We already know Brie Larson is starring in it. We know Nick Fury is going to be played by Samuel L. Jackson again mm. in the movie. And Captain Marvel. And that's going to be a big thing. I wonder if the... I mean, I don't think anything tops that Warner Brothers panel, though, right? No. Spielberg. I mean, how do you beat that? How do you beat that? You're not going to beat it. That's why Marvel's being secretive about it, there's, not telling anybody what's, what's going on. There's a bunch of other panels as well, too. But they got, like, Stan Lee and maybe, like, um, and like Brett Blevins, you yeah. know? And then, so, so that's... That's what they have to compare with uh, well, Spielberg. And to anyone on the Facebook feed, chi- chime in. Let me know what is it the one panel you would love to see if you could be at San Diego Comic Con right now. That's what I want to know. Uh, because when we come back, we have an awesome We're guest. We have House of Cards actor Kevin Kilner coming up next. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> If you have an interest in marijuana, you want to know about marijuana, law, policy, and culture, then feel free to join me, Joseph A. Bondi, every Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning on my show, In the Know 420 on TalkingAlternative.com. Hi, this is Rob K. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. We uh, talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture, all the stuff that you love, and we do it right stuff here. Stuff um, that makes the girls run away. Oh, well, clearly. <laughs> no, no, no. This, that is completely stuff false. Stuff that makes the girls That leave. is completely, completely false. I recommended false. Secrets of the Sire on my show, and I got less uh, female <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Secrets of the Sire.
Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. We on talkradio.nyc and on streaming live on facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. I uh, want to welcome our next guest, uh, who is just phenomenal. Like, his resume is ridiculously phenomenal. Uh, his credits include House of Cards, Dollhouse, Quantico, started Home Alone 3, American Pie 2. He was on The Cosby Show, my man. Really? Yeah. That's really? Just, that's just, I, Which I was, episode? Well, I can't tell you right now. I'd have, up, I'd have to do even more research, which I, which you wouldn't, which read. you didn't, yeah. which you wouldn't, read, so you know, because so, you didn't do it. I want to welcome Kevin Kilner on the show. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm good, Michael. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And I got to tell you, uh, I mentioned you uh, that you were coming on the show. We have interns here, and one of our interns was like, he was in a Cinderella story. He was in a and she was blown away uh, that we have you on the show right now. Her, her, her name is Kennedy, so she was very excited to have you. You know, it's it, it's interesting having been a dad on, I guess, many many movies because uh, there's literally these movies, obviously keep you know live in the cable universe for forever and sure. DVDs and things. And so, I'm literally having generations of people, um, <laughs> and and, and it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. And I mean, it, it, it's people from all walks of life. I mean, there's people that are from sci-fi crowds, people who knew me as dads and, you know, Home Alone 3 or Smart House or, you know, Raising Helen or Cinderella Story. Um, there's people who, who now are deeply into House of Cards. And um, it, so it's it's interesting how it, it turns over in, in, in time. I did a, a like five or six episode arc on One Tree Hill years ago. Yep. And I've got mothers and daughters, but the daughters are no longer like 14. They're like 24 and their mothers are in there. You know? And they're like, we used to watch you every week, you know. <laughs> so it's um, that's interesting. How did you How did you first get into acting, and what was, what was like your first big break? Well, um, I got out of. I, I went to uh, college to play a, a sport, basically, because I, I had a deep dream of, of playing lacrosse at Johns Hopkins and, wow. and playing on some some teams that would hopefully win an NCAA championship. And I was fortunate enough to be a very average player on some very, very good teams that where I got to play on three different NCAA championship teams. We are very average and, podcast um, hosts. After that, I sort of didn't know what I was going to do. So I went, I, I followed the conventional route that a lot of my teammates did. And I went into a lot of them were going into finance and the brokerage business and the insurance and some of them were becoming lawyers and, uh, I became a commercial credit analyst at a bank, and then I, I, I later became a commercial loan officer. And I, I really quickly, like within two months, knew I'd made a huge mistake <laughs> and that it was not for me. <laughs> and uh, I went back to night school. Um, well, first I played a season of minor league football at night, which used to be played for a semi-pro team. But I night football. What I thought you? I wanted a shot at the NFL, and uh, then I realized quickly that there's fast, and then there's like professional fast at some <laughs> whole other, you know, level. And I realized I wasn't good enough, so uh, I went back to night school, took a couple semesters of journalism, a couple semesters of fiction writing. I thought I wanted to write, and then as I got deeper and and definitely definitely more deeply depressed, I. <laughs> I, 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 I followed an instinct that I had had for many, many years that I had not spoken to anyone about, really, which was I, I used to look at films and, and television and say, you know, I think I can do that. I, I mean, I really, I just know I could do that. So I took an acting class, and um, the first night I got bitten and um, took another one in Baltimore. You know, I was working all full-time during the day, and I was taking these acting classes at night, and Saved up my money, moved to New York, started in 1985, started studying, um, went through a two-year Meisner program, studied in the summers with people from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts and uh, other places and just kept, you know, taking lots and lots of acting classes and, you know, got a break on stage, um, got a break and uh, did a movie of the week that was a back to a pilot uh, um, that took me to Los Angeles and uh, got me my agent and, and, and uh, got me a new manager and, um, you know, and it sort of just, you know, fell in step from there. So, so you were doing all this stuff. I want to answer one trivia question. Yeah, okay. Cosby Show was the first guest star I ever did. It was, I, it was 1989, and, it, and the title of the episode was Mrs. Huxtable Goes to Kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> I saw that on the IMDb, which is pretty good. So you awesome. basically you did all this stuff before you actually 
end up doing what you're supposed to do. And it was probably the day you realized you looked in the mirror and you're like, I'm an incredibly handsome guy. I should just be acting right now. I should be on TV right now. Is, is, <laughs> that, that's what ended up happening, you know? Because we, we yeah, did this and we it, immediately gravitated toward radio. So, you know, that, that, was, that was what we I did. Don't know about the, I, don't know, I don't know about looking in the mirror and saying, I, I mean, I, I, I left the bank and I became an office manager for a mortgage <laughs> bank and ended up in a place called Dothan, Alabama, which is literally oh, an hour or so uh, southeast of Montgomery and literally 10 minutes above the Florida Panhandle. And 10 minutes, if you drive 10 minutes east, you're in Georgia and southwest Georgia. And it was uh, down there when I was living, literally living in a cornfield in a trailer that had no <laughs> insulation with a train, train tracks about uh, maybe 60 to 80 yards from the trailer. And the train used to come ripping through there at four in the morning and the whole trailer would shake. And I kind of woke up and thought, you know, I got to get out of here. I got to get to New York. <laughs> I gotta, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to. You know, I'm going to be in this trailer with this. I, I shared the trailer with a mouse, you know, and I, I, you know, I said, actually, talk to the mouse. And I, was, I thought, yeah, I'm really going to lose my mind here. What am I doing in <laughs> southeast Alabama? I, mean, you know, I think, I think everybody. <laughs> I think everybody in Southeast yeah, Alabama is thinking, yeah. what am I doing in Southeast Alabama? They're doing Alabama? it right now. Yeah, they're they're like, like what? what am I doing here right now? <laughs> and why are all these mice in here? It was nothing more than depression. It was nothing more than, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take my life if I don't, you know, attempt to do this thing. And if I fall flat on my face, and so be it, I'll go back to Baltimore and, you know, become a school teacher. My mom was a teacher, so she thought I always should be a teacher and a coach. And, <laughs> but, you know, the B plan is I'll, I'll go get my teaching certificate and become a coach or something. So you played uh, you played Michael Kern in House of Cards. Um, you get yes, your, your character Senator Michael Kern. What's that? Senator Michael Kern. Senator now, Michael what Kern. What state was he from? What's that? What state was he from? Trivia. Oh boy, he's grilling us. Yeah, he's completely yeah. changed the rules. He came with his own questions. <laughs> turns. Click, click, click. <laughs> Find out what state. What state? Well, no, my question was. Um, sure. You know, your character gets screwed over by Kevin Spacey, though, you know, because uh, you ended up getting the job that he was promised, the cabinet position that, he, you know, that, that um, you know, you were promised. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think the, uh, do you have any, is there any way your character is going to come back to, the, c- come back on the show at all? Or, or is there any speculation of that? Or, you know, I, I'm sure you would love to return to the show. And then a second question is, you were on, you know, you were on from the very beginning and House of Cards was a kind of the first Netflix show to really, it was one of the very first Netflix shows, period, but it became like one of their staples. You know, did you get the feeling you were going to be part of something that was, that was pretty big? Well, uh, so let me go, let me answer the first question first. Um, I would love to, to come back, and I've always thought, you know, when Bo Willimon was the head writer there, I, 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 I said, you know, I, my feeling is, is that. My character was quite literally, in the first episode, was quite literally the first character that you see stabbed in the back by Kevin's mm-hmm. character or, or, you know, with dirty, po- dirty trick politics sure. you know, that he, you know, set about to ruin my career. Mm-hmm. I thought the character actually would probably not even get reelected. And they called me, I called my agent in season two and said they wanted to have him come back for the final episode. And I made this deal with. I make this deal with Kevin's character, you know, to help him in the Senate for to help him towards impeachment of the sitting president. And in in return for what I thought was going to be becoming Secretary of the Treasury, um, at least that's what he said to me at the time. And and then we never heard anything after that. And yet in season three, my agency got a call saying, you know, is Kevin Kellner available? You know, when is he available? And my agent was like, Yes, he's available. You know, <laughs> uh, he loves the show, and anytime you want him, just, just call. Um, and then, I don't know if it was season four or season five, maybe it was like two years ago, there was another call saying, you know, what's his availability for the entire, and they wanted to know for the entire season. Oh, wow. And we never heard anything. So, <sighs> well, I, you never I know. Do that know could what come happens back. in writing rooms because I have friends who are, are television writers, and, you know, a lot of times the, the, the storyline, you know, in this instance, just doesn't concern the cabinet. Sure. And, and it doesn't concern, you know, they, they don't see the value added in going there. They want to go over here. They want to write in this part of the story. And that's just the way, that's, you know, just where the cookie crumbles type of thing. So we get these tantalized, or my agent gets these tantalizing calls saying, you know, seven children are available. And, uh, you know, hopefully one day in, before this thing completely ends, um, you know, that, that will come to fruition. The other uh, question was, 
I will say this. Um, the, the interesting thing was is that on most TV series, you don't sit around and do a table read. I mean, you're just moving too mm-hmm. fast. And um, But because they sh- um, David Fincher shot the first two episodes yeah. and directed them, and, and I was in both of those episodes, he shot those two episodes not over... I mean, I think generally you shoot an episode of television, even House of Cards, in eight or nine days tops. Uh-huh. Eight or nine working days. Um, we took... I think he took six weeks, so what's that, 30 days to do this? Because they knew that the first two episodes would be everything that's going to the critics. And this, and you know, it's we're all sort of overwhelmed with the 500 television shows on now, and how do we all keep up? We, it's almost impossible. I, I feel like I'm drowning all the time sure. trying to keep up with content. But this is, I mean, this made Netflix, this, this was the fulcrum, this was the, the the lever that changed everything. House of Cards changed everything. Yeah, uh, and, it, and it, it made Netflix. Netflix people say this to me. It made Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. You know, now Netflix is in creating content. I don't and disagree. It started with House of Cards. You know. So we were sitting around that that table, and there's Kevin, and there's Robin, and at the head of the table, and they had, in those first two episodes, there were easily thirty speaking roles. Yeah. So I'm looking at these 30 actors, many of whom I recognize, many of whom I've known through New York theater and elsewhere in my career. I had tremendous respect. The, the actors I was looking at, I was like, man, these are actors, actors. Yeah. These are the kind of actors that only other actors know about and know how good they are. <laughs> and and it, unless, you know, and I'm a geek about acting, so unless you're a geek about acting, you, you wouldn't, the general public wouldn't necessarily know these people. But I'm looking at the table and I'm going, this is going to be good. Because Bo's writing was so, it just leapt off the page. And it doesn't always happen that way. And when it's that good, you just go, wow. Yeah. These actors and this. And, you know, and Fincher, I mean, I'm a huge Fincher fan. But, you know, he is, he works like a painter in terms of depth of field. You know, most directors now shoot with two cameras, but Fincher has two mobile cameras. They're always in motion in, to varying degrees. Like one might be moving quickly, one might be moving slowly. Um, there's a, a scene that I had to do that was shot in slow motion where I'm coming through the Senate cafeteria and I'm turning a 90, a 90, making a 90 degree turn with my staff around me. And he, he wanted me to look at Kevin's character and Kevin to look at me. And for me to kind of give him a little nod, and he said, included in that nod is not only is that you should have gotten a job, <laughs> you know Spacey should have gotten a job, and that he was more qualified than you. At the same time, then I want you to kind of like just you know, lift your head up and go on as if we must have done that 50 times. <laughs> and he would say to his DP, look, I want, I want some yellow over his left shoulder, somebody in yellow. I want some blue over the right shoulder. I, I want them, you know, I, I want no one as tall as him. And, you know, he thinks in terms of like a painter does, wow. like a depth of field and color and things like that. And because we did so many takes, I mean, he got, I think, a, a fantastic shot, but he kept, you know, he, half the time he was saying to me, nope, didn't see it, Kevin, go back, do it again. Huh. Nope, come on, a little bit more. You wow. know, okay, that's too arrogant. Okay, you know, go back, do it again. But, you know, when you work with people who are that perfectionistic, and, you know, David Fincher's a guy who builds, he uses the same camera crew as the really great directors do. He uses the same camera crew on every single project he does. And he built his own cameras. He started as a as a camera geek and in in a shop that repaired and built them. And then he created his own stuff. And he you know he keeps all his own equipment. You must do a screen test for him. Not everybody's like that, especially in television. You, you have to do a screen test. You know. Um, wow. So it's really it was it was I, I did have the feeling, and I think a lot of us had the feeling. It was something House different, Cards was right? Be special because yeah. of Bo's writing and David's you know, incredible, meticulous directing style. Very cool. Wow. I mean, I love, I love the inside. I love the inside uh, scoop on that. Uh, you worked on, uh, on Dollhouse. Uh, did you work directly with Joss Whedon? Uh, you know, I did not work directly with Joss. This was a show that um, 
my wife actually had worked uh, Jordan Baker. She Jordan had worked with with Joss um, on um, I'm sorry his pr- prior show and I'm forgetting it uh, with the Firefly. Oh, with- yeah, yeah. No, not Fire. The one um, two before that, the one that put him on the map, so to speak. Oh, Buffy. Um, I'm forgetting Buffy, it. Buffy the and, Vampire Slayer or Angel? You no, know, she talked about his meticulousness. Um, but after Firefly, he was trying to executive produce without getting okay, and, and sort of running the writer's room without having actually having to do a lot of the heavy lifting of the writing. Sure. And evidently, you know, I was hired. I remember distinctly that it was either five or six episodes. I was at least like a minimum. It was a, supposedly a minimum of five episodes, let's say, and you're going to be. All I was told is you're going to be a heavy, you're going to be a dark character. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Wow!" I, I left at it. I was like, "To work with Joss Whedon, yeah, absolutely." Um, they were not doing well um, in terms of, of numbers on viewership, and um, there was he was getting, you know, supposedly the scuttlebutt was he was getting a lot of notes from the suits and uh. we were shooting over the twenty over on the twentieth century lot. So I know that I think it was twentieth century Fox Television, and he was not happy with the notes and finally they were saying you know it's too heady you know, not enough action <laughs> is somebody going to die so he took <laughs> over he took over I did two episodes and most of my scenes were with Harry Lennox and he took over and the second episode that I did when I got it I was like I just called my agent and said what's going on they, I'm dying in this and they, evidently the word was that he said Josh took over the you know he took over the writing of this and he said he said somebody is going to die this guy's going to die <laughs> like right now <laughs> and that was the end and of that my was you <laughs> on, on but uh, you know it, it and it, I, I it show didn't last much longer after that it was uh, you know um, it never really got the support it needed and yeah and, um, the viewership that it probably deserved. So you've been, I mean, again, the, 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 the list is incredibly Im- impressive. Quantico, The Good Wife, you were just on The Blacklist, CSI, Ugly Betty. I mean, you said you did the arc on One Tree Hill. You started Home Alone 3. We're going to Cinderella Story, as Kennedy uh, pointed out earlier as well, too. Uh, what's the one role that you think people recognize you more for out of any of those roles? Probably Smart House, only because... We sh- LeVar Burton directed it, and we shot it in, I think it was 1997, I want to say, or mm-hmm. I don't know, 96, something like that. And um, it continues to play on the Disney Channel and, and always has, and it was it was oh, the wow. highest rated Disney Channel movie ever. <laughs> and uh, because it was so popular... Um, they, I, we have all three I mean, interns multiple, right now who are of the generations. age. Again, like I said, yeah. when I started with you guys, it, it's like it's interesting to come across multiple generations. There's people who are 14 years of age in 97, 98, say 99. And then as it continued to play all the I mean, it's from what I'm told, it, it occasionally will still have a run. But it, it definitely made runs through 2010. So that's like yet another generation. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's at least two generations there that, that, that grew up on the movie. And I haven't, you know, lost a tremendous amount of hair or gained a tremendous amount of weight, so I kind of look, you know, a little bit similar, or, you know, definitely older, for sure. <laughs> but a lot of people, you know, recognize me. One of, my, one of my favorite stories is my wife and I were coming out of a, we were living in Los Angeles at the time, and we had gone up to Pasadena to do some shop and i don't like the shop but she said you know you got to get some clothes and we're coming out of the store with all these bags and we're literally walking across an open air space now all these it was like 15 you know 17 guys in in hoods like all with their hoods up and and all tatted up and coming walking toward us like really fast my wife's like what's happening what's happening and, just standing on. and this guy comes up and then the leader of this group he just like he whips his hood back and he looks and he goes yo you the dad from Smart House? <laughs> and I said, I am. And he said, we love that movie. <laughs> and, like, he and his posse, like, you know, whatever, they, they wanted some autographs, and then they, they left, and my wife looked at me, and she said, I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ka- oh, 
Kevin, thank you um, so much. That is amazing. That is an awesome story. Uh, you, you just, I mean, really, I got to just stand back and admire. You've had an amazing career, and uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for joining us on the show tonight. Uh, thank you so much. It, it was my pleasure, and uh, I'll definitely hit you guys up on social media. I, I, I love it. And I love science fiction. I love comics. So um, I'm sorry we didn't get into that. Maybe we'll do that, do that, do that next time. You are welcome back anytime you'd like. We'll, we'll hit you up in a few, and uh, if you got something good to Thanks. promote, let me know. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Thank Take you care. so much. Bye. When we come back, we are spinning the racks. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. Hello, this is Mark Torres. And Pronto Comic Zone, Dominic Sperano. And listen to our show, It Came From The Radio, right here on talkradio.nyc, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about entertainment, movies, comic books, and other news. So make sure you check us out. That's right here, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Wednesday, talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com You ever seen like the old men at the Starbucks? Like they had their little like. I don't go to Starbucks. Oh, I do. I'm, I work at Starbucks. Man. It's fantastic. And uh, <laughs> they just have these old men clubs, and they just sit around and talk about the good old days. That's why I don't go into Starbucks. Exactly. It's a creepy sausage fest <laughs> on on caffeine. Secrets of the sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. I want to thank my guest, Kevin Kilner, uh, House of Cards actor, uh, Home Alone 3. Uh, I mean, we didn't even get into that One Tree Hill. I mean, he's been on so many great shows. So I also want to give a yeah, shout-out to Barry awesome. Dorfman. I want to give a shout-out to Barry Dorfman. Barry is the one who actually made the uh, introduction for us uh, to get him on the show. So uh, thank you, Barry. And uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, there was so much to talk about with him that we didn't even get into. I was actually going to ask him for some acting advice because I, I was in a commercial this week. Yes, you were. So I was the guy that can't sleep. What would you have asked him? How he can help me further my career. You know, well, where can he get me? Well, you know? It's a little nebulous. Oh, right? absolutely. It's, a, it's completely self-congratulatory. There's, no, there's, <laughs> there's nothing else about it. I was awesome. He would have been like, can't sleep. get more jobs. Yeah, he'd be that like, was, that's his advice. He'd be like, you're competition now. Yeah. <laughs> get I'm out hanging of here. up this phone. This is ridiculous. I yeah. didn't come here for this. <laughs> we need a guest to storm off at some point. Yeah. We're, we haven't made but it. hang up. We, They're going to have to hang up because well, most of them call they, in. They can't actually, right, they yeah. can't actually they storm. They can storm off, but then it's like, uh, you got to hang up the phone. Yeah. Because... Hello? Be like, Hang up the phone. <laughs> We've got nothing but static <laughs> yeah. on this line. Did he you're walk ruining off? our show. We have no clue what you're doing right and now. It's like, not effective. Right. Or maybe it is at that point. Maybe that would be more effective. Well, if he got out of range of his it's phone. It's like a dial tone. Yeah, and it just went white noise. The only question would be why. Or if he fell in his pool, he's walking out. <laughs> And he walked out the back, and he storms, and he what? opens the thing, and he... Why do you assume he's got a pool? Because he's, they're at home. Everybody's got a pool, right? <laughs> every, everyone we talk to, club. every every guest we have is like this rich, you know, super, super actor <laughs> god or whatever. comes back to the money for you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. They're all on Money Island. That's right. Every one of them is on Money Island. <laughs> that's right. There's a lot of pools on Money Island. That's what, well, that's very true. I'm that's just right. saying, if he was on... If he stormed off with the phone and fell in the pool... 
Well, that would be that would that, that would, would make, be effective. That would make at least social media for a little while. Yeah, right. That would make that us, would that would know. be and no. Maybe we could be on. Monday I think one. you're wrong about that. I don't think it would be a little while. I think it would be. Oh no, I, I mean, think like we would, would make last, that last a it, year. Oh, a year? <laughs> yeah, a year. It's a little over a year. I don't. Okay, maybe not you. I would be talking about it over a year. They, yeah, that's them. It's, but that's the that's representative them. generation of the people that would be, you know, cultivating No, 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 no. It. They wouldn't care. They don't even care now. They're sitting right here watching <laughs> us. I'm just saying I would just keep talking about it regardless of how unhip it was. This is very true. All right, every week we're going to do an abridged Spinning the Racks. The most fantastical pop culture news out there. Spin the Racks. Spin the Racks. <laughs> Every time we say we have to recut that, we will recut that. We will. I mean, look, I was on vacation I'm this past weekend. That. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> Wonder job. Woman creator's polyamorous relationship is the focus of a new film. Last week we talked about Wonder Woman's sex cult. Yes, we did. The creator of Wonder Woman was actually in a sex cult. He was a polyamorous relationship. He was married to multiple Which people. Which is really not a surprise if you look at Wonder Woman. Oh, it's not. It's not at all. But here's the, the best part, though. What's the best part with it? Professor Marston and the Wonder Women hits theaters in October. Like, amazingly. Like, they must listen wow. to our show. They just got that cranked out real uh, quick. Amazing. Real amazing. Quick. So the film explores the polyamorous and radically sexual cut out relationship. Oh. We should, though. We should get a cut. We should. They should make a movie of us. I, I Not so, getting definitely. a cut. I think so. I think <laughs> the so whole movie sure. is how we're not getting a cut of anything that we're that's talking a, about. That's a new movie that's going to come out. Yeah, after. exactly. And finally, I wanted to get this in. We're running out of time. We, we're cutting short a little bit. But Pornhub traffic plummets during <laughs> Game of Thrones season premiere. <laughs> Porn provider Pornhub reports their site traffic was down 4.5% on Sunday when HBO aired the popular fantasy uh, series uh, season 7 premiere. A, it's a considerable change in visitors as Sunday night is one of our most popular times. Here's a ridiculous question that probably no one asked. Yeah. Who did they report that to? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? like, like who said, "Hey, how'd your traffic go while Game of Thrones is on?" Yeah, and you then, know, like, how did that become a thing? Somebody had a question. Yeah, somebody had to think someone that had to wonder. And, hey, and contact Pornhub and be and like, por- or porn, "Was porn dead?" It had to be so bad that Pornhub had to call somebody and say, yeah. "Hey, where'd everybody go?" Do you know what they probably did? <laughs> they probably put it on social media. <laughs> yeah. All right, join us next week. Uh, We've got uh, we're gonna do. We did a little pre, a little Comic Con preview next week. We're gonna go post Comic Con. We're gonna talk postal. about all the great we're stories. We're going post. I want to know year. what happened at that at that star, at that uh, Warner Brothers panel. I want to know the Marvel panel, all that stuff. And Who we're gonna we got welcome. There? We got people on the ground over there. No, we have no. People. We don't. We don't have. Uh, we have interns. They're all in the studio. Yeah, but now. they're all here. Yeah, exactly. They're not, they're not there. I mean, yes, of course we have people on the ground. We have actress. Well, and, we have actress and producer Jordan Gelber coming in studio next week. Next week from Star, cool. Bay, Star Baby Enterprises. She She's all things geek. She's going to break it down with I may us. actually be here for that. That's nice. It's a that's good idea. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, we hope good. you guys will, too. Thank you very much, folks. See you next week. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at TalkingAlternative.com. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Hi, this is Rob K. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? 
then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Robin Callie Show, Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network, 